Hallelujah. You guys are hanging in there. Thursday morning. Hey, listen, we want to talk about a couple of other these, these other names uh, that characterize Satan's work so that we might again, as Peter said, be sober. Okay? Just that's, just simply means to be aware of what's coming out of the invisible world because Satan's not walking around with a lion suit on him. Okay? He's walking around with an attitude out of the invisible realm. All right, against you who believe in the Lord God. And if you're on here and you don't believe in the Lord God, he's coming at you because he doesn't want you to know about the Lord. So he'll make you blind to things, okay, and understanding or even perceiving that there is a God. He'll cause you to be blind. Now, a very powerful uh, angel he was, most high. He was the one who actually uh, guarded God's glory. That's a powerful place to be in. Okay, to say that that's my job. I'm the guardian of God's glory. Okay, and as the guardian of God's glory, he began to take on the, the mind that, guess what, he wanted that glory. Okay, and this is what he's always after. Now, here are a couple of names that you can relate to, certain things that go on around you that you'll see from traveling uh, in the neighborhoods where you might be. Uh, you sometimes see it on TV. And this is this name called Beelzebub, okay, which means Lord of the Flies, all right? It was a pagan idol that's supposed to protect from swarms of flies, okay? Supposed to protect from swarms of flies, okay? Pagan idol, okay? But the Jews understood it as the god of filth, all right? The Jewish cult, they understood it as the god of filth, okay? Now, you look here in Matthew chapter 12, because this is, this is how they were speaking against Jesus, all right? Because they always wanted, as I said to you yesterday, the enemy tries to discredit the servant, the man of God, the woman of God, the child of God, okay? It says, verse 24, or verse 23, And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? They were The things that Jesus was doing and saying and teaching? But the Pharisees, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, prince of the devils. See, they're trying to discredit him, okay? And you can always know that the enemy is working from that invisible realm when you hear people trying to discredit people. It makes you aware. It makes you go like, hey, I don't want, no, don't be talking to me. and Don't even talk to my hands because they're not listening, okay? It makes you to makes you to be aware and causes you to, to have an understanding that I, I'm something's wrong here because why why are they discrediting another Christian? Why is a Christian running down another Christian? Gotta be using the, the mind of, of the enemy, you know? And they called him, you know, said, You you know, you're you're the God of filth. You know, this is what they were saying about Jesus, you know. And he, you know, he just took stuff because he was a man, he was after one goal, and that was to get to the cross. He wasn't concerned about what they were saying to him, okay? He had one goal in mind, get me to the cross so that the resurrection could take place. And then we can fix all this stuff after that, all right? There's another name called Belial, okay? Belial was the name of a false god, and you can find this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15, all right? And this was the God that was given to divert worship from God to Satan. All right, you read a lot of it in the Old Testament, okay? Somebody said, well, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the law. Listen, listen, ho, 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 stop, 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 stop. Be quiet. The law was the what? The word of God, right? All right, that's what it was. It was the word of God. Who is Jesus? He's the word of God. So if you're a believer... Hey, indirectly, yeah, you're still under the law <laughs> because the word of God is the law of Almighty God, okay? So, uh, so don't, don't go in those crazy kind of things. I know what you might be trying to say, but you're not saying it with, with, some, with some thump to, to live by faith, okay? We say all these things. I'm not under the law anymore. Yes, you are. As long, if you're a believer, you're under the word of God. And the word of God is, guess what? Jesus, all right? And so these people... You read this in 2 Corinthians where Paul says, we don't have any, we should not have any contact with those who don't worship God, with those who, who are unbelievers. You know, you read that whole, read the context of that whole chapter there and you'll see he's letting us know, well, why do you want to hang with people that don't hang with God? 
and you say you're a Christian. Why you won't be at the clubs at night? You being at the clubs and whatever and all these things and all these philosophies. Uh, again, one of the things that he brings against the church, the book of Colossians, is the philosophies. You know, uh, men seeking wisdom and ways to things done by themselves without God. Philosophies. A lot of that is taught by Satan in the whole school system. That's right. The whole school system, school systems are set up. You know, I'm not talking about Christian school system. I'm talking about world systems. The school systems are set up for men to learn philosophies. Have your own wisdom, your own ways of getting things and knowing things. You know, what do you do when you run out of your knowledge and your human experience? You got to have somebody that can carry you beyond that. That's where our guide, the Holy Spirit, comes in. See? If you miss out on him, you're going to miss out on life. I can tell you that, okay? Now, we look at another one called the evil one. He's called the evil one. This is Satan, the one who's working behind the scenes, got all these demonic spirits and hosts and this whole line of, uh, you know, how he's got that system set up working against us. And this evil one, you find it's written in John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And the Greek word for it is absolute corruption. So when we see absolute corruption, we know that it's from the evil one, okay? Well, what do we see going on around us today, all right? It's not heaven on the earth unless you are, you are set forth in faith and you're living and you have this guide and he's teaching you every day and walking with you every day. We have absolute corruption, not from just the outhouse, but all the way through the whatever house, every house there is, okay? Absolute corruption, going on all over the place, you know? Just look at overseas and how, you know, how everything is and then look in this country and see how everything is. And then you can even look in your town and even look in your house sometimes and you can see that there are some forms of evil corruption that need to be addressed. Well, the evil one is causing those things to happen, okay? He will influence anything that he possibly can, anything, all right? Look how he came against Job's life, okay? For what reason? Just because God gave him the, the limited ability to do it. Letting you know, and guess what? He'll take advantage of every opportunity he can to cause something wrong in your life. Okay? So he'll do that. Okay? And then we can call him, we can use this particular word, and we're going to get into this tomorrow, called the tempter. Okay? And he even came against Jesus to tempt him. So as you're studying these particular characteristics of him, you can recognize or you can be aware of when something is happening around you, where is it coming from? It's coming out of that invisible realm. Like the wind, we can see the effects of it, okay? And so because I can see the effects of it, I have to know that these things are happening around us to not build us up, but to destroy us. We'll see you tomorrow morning here on Daily Bread. Hallelujah.